Podcast City Network. Good evening, everyone. You're listening to another episode of the Deathmatch Russell Podcast. It's Wednesday night, and my guest tonight is the indie indie pro wrestler, Jay George. Yerp! And we're going to be talking to him and see what he's up to. Let's talk wrestling. Let's have a good night. And much, much more. Tune in, fans, right now. Hey, George, are you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, we're live right now. So We're live. We are live. Yeah. Yerp. Yep, I, just, I got that in there too. So <laughs> had to. Oh man, hey man, thank you so much for having me on. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely, me too. Me, me too. To have finally get you on here. We talked about this a I think way back. I was like, let me try to get this guy on. He's so busy though. He's so busy, busy guy. You know, their business. You took a little trip. You know, let's talk about that, man. You were just in Germany, man. How was that experience for WXW? Oh my God! It was uh, it was honestly it was probably the, uh, the yeah. best uh, the best two months of my of my life. Yeah, uh, you were. It, it, was, it was yeah. I mean, for for being a, a big fan of mm-hmm. European style, right? And just having an appreciation for uh, just like wrestling being an international thing. Yeah, uh, that that was definitely like a dream come true to be there and. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, I hope I'll, I'll be able to uh, go uh, back. To come back, yeah, absolutely. Germany's awesome, man. I've been there. I've been to Germany, like you know, family. We did uh, like a gene- genealogy trip one year, like in October. It was wild. It was awesome, you know. Just really cool to see, you know, and be there, like Baden Baden, and like Aus- Austria, and just like Munich and all the other places too. A couple extra places, you know. It's really wild. A, ge- a genealogy trip. Uh, yeah, you know, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, just history of family tree and shit. Finding like, of course, yeah, yeah. you know, but was that like a trip? Like, yes, or... yes. My uncle, my uncle actually was a teacher in school in Virginia. And, uh, uh-huh. and so he would, uh, he actually would do his look up, look up archives and our family tree and stuff, you know, find our history and stuff. So it was pretty wild. You know, we found like gravestones of like relatives. It was awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, to experience that, just to be with, like, I think it was about 10 of us all together, you know, relatives all got together and we went. It was awesome. Well, it was awesome, you know? It was just different atmosphere, you know? Instead of being... Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, the, if we were there, even though it was, like, still wintertime. Yeah. Um, It was still, like, uh, the weather's still, like, way better than it was uh, over here. Because, like, when I was there, we luckily... I luckily missed the uh, mm-hmm. was a really really bad winter from what I I heard. So yeah. thankfully I didn't I didn't have to subject myself to any of that. No, I stayed in hostiles hostels and that was pretty cool. Like you know houses and whatever. It was really cool. It was really neat. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of like our setup. Yeah. Um, uh, at the house because we were yeah. the way it was set up is we lived in an apartment that was upstairs from the. Um, Mm-hmm. from the school right and it was like uh two bunk beds in each room yeah and every couple every couple weeks or so there would be a turnover of people coming mm-hmm. and they were coming from all different parts of the uh the world which is like very cool you had people coming from mm-hmm. uh poland and you had people coming from brazil yeah and portugal and belgium and yeah so that, like that part was pretty cool getting to like mm-hmm interact as well with other people from from you know like i said different walks of life yeah, i picked up i'll tell you what i picked up the german really quick because like it was like hello and you know das beer is good and you know just all your basic 
hello and yeah. sang, you know? It was really awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was but, but, but you know what the funny thing was? I, you, you go to Germany, you don't know what you're expecting. Like, you go to want to go get an iced coffee, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> go for, And you ask them for an iced coffee? No, I want uh, coffee, iced coffee. You know, they, they give you a cup with ice in it. You know, they, they didn't know the coffee. Our espresso was their, their iced coffee, you know what I mean? Like, they don't drink normal. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they actually, um, at the, uh... Yeah. They put me onto this at the, um, at the supermarkets, like at the Aldi's. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, like, a little section that had, like, these... Uh, cups, cups of uh, iced coffee. Yeah. So like, and they were like, and they tasted delicious too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that would have been that would have been your, your best bet there. Yeah. Well, I didn't know at the time. You know, I'm just <laughs> a tourist. Come on. You know. Of, of course, of course, man. Yeah. But yeah, the food is awesome. Definitely. You know, the food. I'm sure you loved it. It was. <laughs> oh, it was great. It oh was my god. Fresh. It was. Uh, yeah, you, you just the quality of it. You could just taste it. Um, I mean, Wiener Schnitzel to you, you name it. You know, it was just really, <laughs> you know, it was it was really good. I mean, to be a, like, I don't know, do you have German in your genes? Do you have any German in your family? I none, none that I know of. I actually yeah. should probably do one of those uh, mm-hmm. His, genealogy, to, yeah, uh, DNA, yeah, twenty three and Me things because. I, I I definitely would like to know a little bit more about what's going on with me, but uh, yeah. No, yeah, this is, I'd actually been to Germany before, but this mm-hmm. was my, my first time, like, mm-hmm. doing it on my own and staying for yeah. an extended amount of time, and mm-hmm. I I absolutely loved it, and I also got to wrestle in Amsterdam, which is really cool, get wrestle in Holland, mm-hmm. which is just, like, yeah. awesome, another another country that I get to perform in. That's awesome, man. It sounded like you had a blast, and, and you know, took your time, and you studied a lot, you learned, probably learned a lot, and it was like, wow, this is, you know... A lot different than the state, you know, our state wrestling, you know, our professional, you know, independent wrestling. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, uh, yeah. There's definitely a lot of uh, uh-huh. terminology. A lot of, yeah, and there's a lot of uh, weird uh, little differences there, but mm-hmm. you know, it, like I said, it was it was an absolute blast uh, being out there and just and like you're also learning from like. You know, Walter come, came in and did a class, and mm-hmm. you got to train a lot with uh, Tim Thatcher, who's yes. super, oh my super, god, he, super underrated. Yeah, before. and uh, I got to, I, he became like a mentor of mine, mm-hmm. and I, I learned just so much, not just like wrestling with him and training with him, but living with him as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that was that just added to the experience and made it all the more worth it. Right, right. That's awesome. Uh, let's get right into it. Let me see what I have here. I gave you. Let's get right into it. We've been into it. I know we yeah. are. We're in it. We're we're neck deep in it. Oh, did I lose those questions? I just lost those questions. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm oh, done. No, you lost the questions. Uh oh. It's on my notepad. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, man, I'm sure you've done this enough times. You could uh, you could pop some off the top of your head. Yeah, I could. I could. I could. But here we go. I found it. Ding ding ding. All right. All right, what what was it like growing up in where are where you where are you from? You know, where did you grow up as a kid? And what was it like? Um, or yeah, right. It it was a uh, it was a uh, pretty interesting, I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I was originally uh, born in uh, New York City, but mm-hmm. I I didn't live there enough to like. Yeah. I I by the time I was, I believe. Uh, how old was I? I was seven, eight, or nine when mm-hmm. I moved. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I moved, and I moved to Newbridge, New Jersey, and uh, mm-hmm. and that and that was uh, what it was, your typical suburban town, you know. But it was right on the outskirts of New York City, like it was about ten, fifteen minutes away from the the bridge that connects you to Manhattan. So like, there was a lot of transplants. So it was it was like a mix of everything. Is probably the best way that I can I can say it but uh I don't know I, I wouldn't I don't know anything else you yeah. know uh like in terms of how I grew up so it was all I know and uh it was yeah it was definitely an interesting mix of uh of like what you typically would see at it in a suburban neighborhood yeah it's like it's yeah well, me but me. like there's like a mix of like very uh mm-hmm. modernizing culture 
I just grew up in a very interesting time, and I think I mean that just goes for a lot of us. Yes, um, yes, I'll yeah. say because I was born in North Dakota. <laughs> The Grand oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My dad was a vil- military vet. Uh, you know, Vietnam. So we traveled, and my mom was from out, out west in Colorado. So we made our way back here. You know, to Jersey Shore. So <laughs> how I ended up there, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. That's quite quite the journey there. Yeah, it is. It is. That's pretty cool, though. You know, I love the snow. Oh, yeah, I love the cold, though. <laughs> I guess that's that. Yeah. Ger- that's that German in me. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay, what age did you get into wrestling? I was uh, initially when I like first discovered it, I was about five, six years old, and uh, mm-hmm. it was kind of by accident. I was just flipping through the channels, and I came across some. Uh, I came. I think it was like Nitro. It mm-hmm. was nineteen ninety five. Yeah. And it was uh, right before Sting joined the uh, NWO, and he had, like, the black hair, but he still had his uh, mm-hmm. colorful face paint. And I don't know what it was, but I just remember him coming out. Yeah. It was in the middle of his entrance, and uh, I was hooked ever since, uh, ever, ever since that moment. You know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I... Big WCW moments are great, you know. Look at the past, what they were, you know. Now it's like, wow, here it is. Yeah. You know, keep watching like old matches and old stuff. It's like now you look at it, it's like, wow, this is like archi- yeah, it, it's archived, it was you know. Cool because like, yeah. as soon as I started getting into wrestling, I became one of those types where like I had to know like every bit of backstory. And the cool thing with pro wrestling is that it it takes place in through throughout the spectrum of real time so mm-hmm. like all these the stories never end and they just interweave and and connect with each other and like it's so like that's when you you know like you go back and you end up watching Undertaker's entire career because you're curious about like well how does he debut and then what happened during this time and this time mm-hmm. and like it all just kind of like mixes in with each other and it's a never-ending thing so like I quickly mm-hmm. became like a historian and like just read up on as much history as I could. And then at the time that I was growing up, mm-hmm. um, we had right before it was before the network, we had the WWE twenty four seven on the Man Channel. Yeah. And I I would I was lucky with that because they would show so like every throughout the month they would show you an episode from Raw and SmackDown on the same week, but you know from like from starting from the beginning from mm-hmm. 1995 all the way up to when it ended so like mm-hmm. i kind of got to relive a lot of stuff that i had missed out on up until the stuff that i, I already yeah until our friends yeah. came along and gave us vhs tapes and dvds and you know yeah because like yes when I, fr- when I first started watching i had no concept of like a yeah. tv schedule <laughs> yeah that- yeah, I don't or think like, I don't think we all like, I don't think we really understood it. Yeah, growing up, you know, as kids, we didn't know. So like the first time I saw it, yeah, like, I was like, "Cool, this is awesome." But yeah. like, all right, now I have no other like I'm not I don't know when to see this again. You know? Yeah. And and now it was that way for me for a while because like I just didn't have any concept of a TV schedule. No. I only I only knew like when I come home from school, you know, mm. these shows are on, but anything past four o'clock, I'm I'm lost. Right. So, so yeah. So, yeah. That that helped out. What? Man. What? what I just always grew up you, watching it. Yeah. You know? uh, do you remember what your first event was as a kid, growing up, like going to your first going like, to, experience? I, I didn't get to go to any events until yeah. Um, geez, until I was older, until I was like, yeah. in high school. Yeah. Because yeah. like I remember one time my friend was like, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to go to I'm going to WrestleMania," mm-hmm. and I. And I was like, oh, wow, cool. And I remember telling my dad. And then one day we were in, in the city, and we were in uh, New yeah. York City. And yeah. I remember we were just standing in, in line at Madison Square Garden for yeah. like almost an hour. Mm-hmm. And and then we finally go up to the ticket booth, and my dad tried to get tickets for, for yeah. WrestleMania that year. And it turned out that it was in Philly. Mm-hmm. And we, I had no idea, you know, and I was yeah. just going off what my friend said. Yeah. And... And then we were watching it, and I remember them saying, oh, yeah, we're in Philadelphia. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. And then it turned out, yeah, he was obviously, he obviously had been lying about going there. <laughs> yeah, I, 
I had a, I, I never really got to go to any events until I was like. Yeah, t- yeah, 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 like local stuff that came around, you know, all the local little carny shows. <laughs> yeah, that first show, that first indie show I went to was uh, headlined by Buddhist the Barber Beefcake. Yeah. And uh, Chris Candido's brother. Yeah. And they had a match, and then I think, like, he got his hair cut, like, not even his hair, like, he got his, a, a little, a bit of his hair snipped off by, by Bruce Barber Beefcake. Oh, my God, was that that shitty promotion at NWS? Oh, 100, 100%. Oh, my God, I was there, I have a picture of that, my, Bruce, Are you me? I have a picture, yeah, my profile, I'll have to dig it out later. Oh, my God, it'd be... I, have, I'm, I, might, you, I might be in that picture, then, because I remember sitting, I was sitting in the front row, Oh. but... By yeah. one of the entrances. Yeah, I sit next to a fat friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's wild. I know. I had a wicked beard. I had a wicked beard at the time. Dude, <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. That's like such a. I know. Such a small world, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It really is. It's like, dude, I have a series of like these weird connections like that of like. Yeah. I remember I met this kid at a Superstar Billy Graham signing, mm-hmm. and and like years later. We're at, at training, and he's telling me about the signing. I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell? I was, at, we were there, and like, we actually became, we had met each other before yeah. we met each other. You know, it's like we, it's like me and Johnny Candido became friends. You know, it was like awesome. You know, it was, yeah. like, it was like totally like wow. You know. Well, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's super cool. That, uh, <laughs> that we got to share a moment. <laughs> we got to share a moment, at, a Brutus moment. <laughs> there you go. Oh, true. That's like, true. that was like true independent wrestling. I wrestling. bet you if I go back to that picture, it probably shows what year. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, that's, so that actually took place in my in my hometown. Yeah. I, I, a couple of years later, I was able able to wrestle there. I wrestled yeah. there last year in that building, so that was like, right. cool. I mean, that's a full circle moment for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of guys who wrestled there. You know, made their name known. <laughs> Look who's there: Joey Janela, Dirtbag Dan. A lot of guys made it big. You know. Yeah, that's right. I had, I had no idea. Wow, that's crazy. The only person I really remember. Yeah. Uh, after that was Steve Off. Yes, yes, yes. Before he came, became into like his own wrestling company, right? Before he started, yeah. he launched off that his own company with his dad, and I don't know what that was. Yeah, I never got to go to any of those. He always told me to come on over, come on, come on, come on. But I was like, eh, stick with one promotion, and I got nailed, n- nailed every day by that stupid promoter by calling me to come on, get, get to the show, Russell, get to the show, get to the show, come on, where are you? You know. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's funny because I I would uh, end up seeing Steve off like mm-hmm. at different points throughout my career. Is one of yeah. the first wrestling schools I tried out at. He was there, mm-hmm. and I remember yeah, I remember like his gimmick stood out to me at the time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so so like yeah, it's pretty crazy to uh, how like all that stuff works, you know? Because then I my first that was my first indie show. Then I ended up uh, wrestling with Steve at, at different points, you know? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that promoter was <laughs> a little bit out there, definitely. <laughs> you know, Dapper Johnny, right? Yes, it, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. He was a weird character in the business. <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. No, don't know what he's doing nowadays. Who knows? But who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we move on to better wrestling, you know. And when it's true, absolutely, we have. We there's lots that we uh, we're blessed to have. You know, oh, my God. George, you know, J. George, excuse me, J. George, J. George, I better start, <laughs> you know, it's all good, it's all good, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, like, wrestle, like, talking about, like, you know, as a kid, you know, I, WrestleMania 5, I got to go, <laughs> like, I tell everybody, that's, like, that's awesome, man, uh, my dad, we, my dad and I got tickets, like, the normal way, you know, nosebleed seats, Five, I sat five rows away from v- Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse doing the commentary. So that was like a moment. And I had the Mega Power sign in my hands. <laughs> wow. I still have the ticket stub to this day. Signed by Marty Gennetti from, uh, and actually an NWS show. <laughs> of course. What else does it matter? <laughs> what, it doesn't matter, but I had it signed, you know? Uh, yeah. No, I say that's, yeah, that's definitely like a cool memento to have. Yeah, yeah. But after that, you know, I used to go to all, I used to go everywhere, George, J. George, I used to go, like, wrestle, you know, just WWE house shows, this and that, a lot of independent shows in Jersey, you know. Well, 
Like in the during that, like in the nineties and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There was a one promotion. Actually, actually, uh, Chris Candido was wh- a lot. He was hooked in it with Balls Mahoney a lot. Um, it was called uh, Phoenix Ch- Phoenix Championship Wrestling in Tom's River, New Jersey. Oh wow! Yeah, that's because I mean, that's... that was like the mecca of of the indie promotions. Because you had Samoa Joe, you had Chris. Christopher Daniels, AJ, you had yeah. SAT, you had SAT, you had Monster Mac and, uh, you know, Dan Moff at the time, and just, it was like territorial, you know, they dominated the scene, you know. Absolutely, man, I mean. For like uh, 20 bucks, you go watch, <laughs> watch fucking Eddie Guerrero versus Nova, come on, where are you going to get that? Never, you know, like a historic uh, moment, you know. Yeah, you never, and you don't know what to appreciate. That. I mean, that's like I it's like, one of the and things. it's like seeing the uh, Charlie Haas and his brother, you know. But he missed it, his brother was, you know, he, his brother died, but they, you know, he was wrestling. It was Austin, just to, the appearance in Shelton Benjamin, like young, like this is crazy. You're like seeing these guys red when he really was red, you know. Oh yeah, I, and and it's funny because I know that's one of the things you wanted to ask me about was like the yeah. difference. Be- between indies then and now and all yeah. that, and I think that's like, I think this weekend um, mm. is kind of like a big uh, example of that. Yeah, um, I want to say SWF. Yeah, SWF Mega Slam. No, I'm talking about. Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. Oh. But I'm talking about uh, WrestleMania weekend in the sense oh, that. My God, that talk about like a crazy weekend. Like I wish I, I remember. Yeah. Um, the first WrestleMania weekend, uh, WrestleMania 29. Mm-hmm. Um. It was it was like maybe five shows, you know, on really not that many stuff. It wasn't as overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And this this week was just I mean it was just this insane. was uh this was like uh <laughs> better than what they did uh, what the uh, New Orleans you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean because it's New York City and you got to go big and yeah but yeah that's but that's that's what I'm saying is like it, that's the difference of like now the indies then and now is it's mm-hmm. like how much it's kind of uh, grown into this phenomenon. And I think a lot of that mm-hmm. um, is because of the fact that you get to see guys like, you just mentioned guys like Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe yeah. and AJ Styles and Low Key yeah. and Homicide. Mm-hmm. And then what they end up, you know, go on to do, yeah. that has a, a direct effect, I think, on the indies. And, and I know, because they, they were running shows during the WrestleMania weekend. Like, come on. They're like here in Rahway, New Jersey. They're here in Queens, New York, you know? Jersey City. Like, it was it was hot Mecca. You know, even, I think, Queens or something, too. Or Jamaica, Queens. There was something running somewhere, you know? I kept the... I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, I was watching the IP, uh, the Fight TV network. My God, it was crazy. Like, all the events going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, wild stuff, man. And, uh, but yeah, that's like... I think that's like, uh, like I said, that's... Direct but next year... Direct. But next year, I'm planning to attend it. Definitely. 100%. You know? I didn't want to be around the Jersey City crew, crazy crowd, but um, this year, next year, I'm going to go. My friends want... Yeah, it's definitely... Yeah. It's definitely an experience. It you know? is. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> for sure I mean you had and yeah I mean that's cause like when uh when it was happening during Wrestlemania 29 at the time mm-hmm. um some of the people that had just been signed to WWE were guys like uh Sami Zayn and Luke Harper mm-hmm. um Sammy Callahan yeah it was like a whole list of guys that were just coming in and then Kevin Owens shortly after yes yeah and I think because of their success that they went out to have and how big stars they became, and I think there's a lot of people, like, I was just talking about how, like, mm. I like I, I would get sucked into these characters and I wanted yeah. to learn their entire history. Yeah. It's the same thing, and then guys end up finding promotions like ROH and PWG, mm-hmm. yeah. and they start to have a deeper appreciation for the independence. So it makes it a great time for me, an independent wrestler, to be a part of this because yes. people are willing to invest and take more stock in us now because they see the potential of us becoming big stars in the future. And look, look at now all, it's, it's and, possible. And look at all these schools that are out. I mean, Black and Brave by, you know, Black and Brave with uh, Seth Rollins. Like, I've seen that on the internet. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm glad that people are looking at this stuff and seeing what he's about, too, you know, to check it out as a wrestler or a fan, you know? Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Hawkins has a tremendous school here in the New York City area in conjunction with WrestlePro, which is another great wrestling mm-hmm. school. It's, of course, yeah, I mean, of course, CZW's dojo, 
You know? Yeah, the CCW Dojo. I mean, that, that's, that's helped me. I've, I've yes. spent some time there, and it's, it's helped me out a lot. I know. And it's gotten me, if I weren't in the CCW, if I weren't a yeah. part of the CCW Dojo system, mm-hmm. uh, I would not have been able to go to Germany. And no, that, that opportunity would, would have not been open for me. No, and you just and you actually and just thinking about it, like just before that, you were just in the trifecta, you know, just to, right before that. Remember, it's like wow, it's this is my opportunity, you know. This yeah, is the, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, they, it's, it's where you these places you go to, they make a big difference in mm-hmm. and the connections that they that come with them, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Ooh, but yeah, that's what are we on to now? Skipping around, skipping around our messages, huh? Let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back and read. Uh, da, 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 da. What promotions did you ever work? Did you ever work before wrestling? I just just I general jumped around. Yeah, just yeah. Jumped. I mean, I always jumped around to different different places and stuff and i got i i mean i've had opportunities to do some cool stuff like Mm -hmm. i I did a like a a pre-show match a dark show a dark match for uh i guess it's not really dark match because there's the footage of it is out there um at evolve wrestling at the time which was really really cool uh man evolve was really a booming scene people didn't realize you know that was yeah it was just it was like the, the show where they had announced uh well, not they announced, but they had uh, Sami Zayn, and at the time, people were, like, mm-hmm. going crazy about that because it was, like, the idea of having a contracted WWE guy in an indie event was, like, a big deal. And so, like, yeah, that was that was a good show to be a part of. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, like I said, I mean, I always just jumped around. Like, I've done stuff in Chicago for freelance for wrestling, and uh, I had the opportunity to wrestle in Canada for uh, C4. So, like, you know, I... I I, it's hard for me to sit back and just name everything, but like obviously I'm at SWF and CZW now, but uh, always I'm a, I've always been jumping around the the indie scenes and I've done a lot of one-off stuff and random shots in places and stuff, you know, for wrestling magic, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. So life on the wrestling. Yeah, yes, life on the road. Life on the road every day, you know? Yeah. Life in the tent. Yeah, I've gone to, you know, done those 10-hour trips to mm-hmm. to Dayton, Ohio for Rockstar Pro. Yeah. You know, always, always moving around. Rockstar, there's a promotion that really, like, people don't realize, like, is, I talk, talk about, I like talking about Rockstar. It's like one of those awesome promotions. Like, they're cool. I've never been. I'm going to attend it one of these days, you know? Just to go. A lot of stars coming out of there. I know. You can't deny their their training program there. It's a lot of stars coming out of there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see where we at now. We are at. Have you ever wrestled any legends? Uh, yes. I've been another again. I've been very lucky to have been mm-hmm. been in there with a lot of. Uh, major stars and uh, mm-hmm. past legends of this business guys like uh, I teamed up with Tito uh, Santana mm-hmm. um, one of the most random matches I ever did yeah. was <laughs> it was me um, me and my friend Logan Black mm-hmm. like, teaming up with Mr. Hughes yeah um, yeah who was it Mr. Hughes me and Mr. Hughes and Logan Black against Adam Rose, El Torito, and the Brooklyn Brawler. Mm. It was the most. Oh my God, that must have been yeah, that, yeah. That would have been a moment. That would have been a moment, you know. Yeah, that was super silly. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, it was so cool. Cause I, you, uh, yeah, because you got to talk with you know talk with him also, which is really awesome. You know, you got to yeah. T- learn. I, oh yeah, hundred percent, man. I had a really fun. I wrestled Val Venus. Uh, yeah. No, I wrestled Val Venus once, and I teamed up with him once, once more, and that was an awesome experience both times. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a segment early in my career with Boogeyman and Goldust, which again, mm-hmm. I mean, awesome moment. I got the worms from the Boogeyman, which is <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I've been, Tongan death gripped by Haku. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've gotten to wrestle Super Crazy twice. Mm-hmm. I wrestled Al Snow. Yeah. I wrestled uh, Hurricane Helms and Rosie, and it was actually Rosie's last match, yeah. which was 
real, real cool moment for me because I have a lot of respect and admiration for the Samoan family. Oh, I think we all do. Big, big, you know, they're just, they're awesome. One hundred. They're a big part of the, the wrestling business, and it's so cool now that there's just so many more guys. Have you seen uh, Jacob uh, Fatu? No, I have not. I've... Dude, this guy, I'm telling you right now, remember that name because he's going to be a huge star. Yeah. He just started out at MLW. He's, um, mm-hmm. uh, he looks a lot like uh, Umaga. Like he's, but, uh, oh, wow. He's like sh- a little bit shorter. I remember that guy. I remember that guy. I'm, uh, or, yeah. Oh, no. Who was that other one? There was somebody from Jersey that used to wrestle all the time. Was that him? No. No. no, no, that was the other guy, right? There was another one that used to face Abyss all the time in Jersey. I can't think of his name. Oh. Lance? No. Oh, he used to run... Off, you... off a of Junior? Was it Off a of Junior or somebody? Could have been, yeah. It might have been Off a of Junior, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, He he's going to be a big star. He's super athletic. He does this, like, uh, a, a double jump moonsault and stuff like that. He's, he's great. Um, he's an MLW now. Have you ever checked uh, him out? Here? MLW, I'll tell you what, awesome stuff right there, too. Everybody doesn't realize. <laughs> Check that out. MLW Wrestling, come on. You know, it's like, it's awesome. Like, that's another indie promotion that blows my mind, too. You know? But yeah, dude, yeah, that's crazy, man. A lot of guys, you know, Blue Meanie, another Jersey guy, mm-hmm. um, Matt Striker, Tommy Dreamer. Mm-hmm. And st- I know, just, I, like, just, just think Matt Striker like, does the voice behind Lucha Underground all the time, you know? It's like, wow. Yeah. That so, is correct, man, and, uh, it works yeah, with... I mean, dude, it's nuts, yeah, so I, it's always cool whenever I get to, like, mm-hmm. be in the same ring as the guys I grew up watching, and, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's pretty then surreal. You, then then you tell your friends, hey, I got to re- wrestle Tito Santana, you know? <laughs> yeah, and not a lot of people get to say that. I, re- I remember I went to uh, Chicago for um, a show, it was Game Changer Wrestling versus Freelance, right? And uh, I went to the t-shirt shop for the first time, that Pro Wrestling Tees, to see what it's, it's really a small, really small storefront, but Tito was yeah. there. Tito was there. He's like, "Hey, Tito, hey, how you doing?" Because he remembers. Yeah, he's so wild. He's he, like a teacher too. Like yes. In yeah, yeah, up in Jersey, and his wife's a dresser, hairdresser, I think. Still, yeah, it's amazing. Small world, though. He remembers people like us, you know. Like he'll just say hi, you know. Hey. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Like I even. Dude. I know. I think I got him saying "Arriba" on my podcast, like you know, <laughs> a video. I had to say, "Hey." Hey Tito, could you say Elite Deathmatch Russell podcast or something? You know, I was like, all right, this is cool. This was a cool moment. But and of course, Coco Beware was right there too. Hey Coco, you know, but I, I'm more friends with Tito than you know. What I mean, I'm sure Coco understands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. What are we up to now? We are up to what do you? What kind of music are you into now? What are you into? What do you listen to? What's your genre of music? Uh, I think uh, I go like, through different kicks and stuff, mm-hmm. and like I was just always uh, I'll I'll always like one day I could randomly be like on a kick and just listen to a bunch of uh, stuff from the Doors. Mm-hmm. Um, but li- lately I've been in a lot of uh, it's a weird mix mm-hmm. of uh. Of like hip hop stuff, yes, um, old and new, mm-hmm. um, which is weird because I was I, I I feel like I'm naturally supposed to hate a lot of the new stuff that's out there, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of it really has caught my ear, and I like the I like the energy of it, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. it, it's different. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I like lo- I love I love the um flambo- like the flamboyance of it, like it's very show showmanshipy, which is kind of what I like. And it just gets me going at the gym. Mm-hmm. And um, so I've been into that stuff, like a lot of Kanye West. And mm-hmm. um, that's probably the most lately. Yeah. It's probably stuff like that. And I mean, then, probably right now on my cell phone, I have uh, Veta, uh, the Veta Band, you know, the Veta Band Fleet. Sounds, yeah, of course. Yeah, sounds yeah, they're like, really good. Uh, they're awesome, man. That's uh, like a... Blew, blew my mind, so I'm like hooked on them. They kind of have like, right? They're like very Zeppelin, like, Zeppelin, very right? Zeppelin like, yeah. Very yes, yeah. I've I've seen the lesbian band. I've seen that lesbian band perform. Oh my god, that band is awesome. The les les Zeppelin band, the chick band. Oh my god, they were awesome too. They're New York. Nice. They played in New York all the time. 
I actually got the chance to see him in Colorado in the mountaintop, like in a, in the, in a campground. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice dude yeah like I, I always wanted to do something like one of those like yeah maybe like a bottom roof festival or a coachella thing but like yeah uh, might also be a little bit too much but we'll we'll see what happens in the future right like, but yeah so that's like my r- ringtone now so, like i got that that when the curtain falls you know that's pretty badass tune so you know there you go. nothing wrong with that you know, when everybody else used to call into the podcast that would play <laughs> <laughs> but I stopped doing that, you know, because it got annoying. Of course, yeah. It got annoying. Uh, what are your finisher, what is, what is your signature or finisher move, moves? Uh, I have a, I always change and evolve, and then being in a Germany kind of mm-hmm. made me kind of Just, want to change my style up a little bit. Yeah. Um, or not so much uh, change my style, but enhance it. Um, but I found myself to certain moves. I find myself kind of doing that just kind of come to me and just feel natural that I wouldn't normally expect. Like in terms of like wrestlers I like versus like stuff I do, Mm -hmm. it's kind of weird. Um, but, um, I do, I have this, a spinning crescent kick kind of like, uh, similar to uh, people that use this move would be guys like RVD, Booker Mm -hmm. T, um, which I, I took me years kind of to, to perfect and kind of work on and get it right. And which is funny. Cause like, I, I remember trying it to do it like, uh, mm-hmm. that kick Alistair Black does. Yeah. But, uh, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The fade to black. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't hook the lit. Like I couldn't hook my foot, but I, I was able to do it with my foot straight. Like, the crescent kick. Like Look at that. Feet. Look at that. There's another guy that we know in the business. Alistair Black. I mean, just think of, you know, where was he before? <laughs> right? I was, I remember I shared, I shared a locker room with Alistair Black. Yeah. And he was giving advice to us. And the one thing that stuck with me that he said yeah. was, think globally. Yeah. And man, that thing stuck with me. And, you know, since then I've been to five different countries. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and, uh, yeah, just think that shout out to him, you know, big, big, big uh, shout out to him, dude, yes, I can't believe, like, I remember just seeing him, like, combat zone wrestling, you know, just like CZW, and 20, 20, 20 weeks later, he's at, on TV, making a big name for himself, you know, that's how you gotta do it, man, that's how, that's, that, how, that's how the business is, it really, you know, I just saw, like, what was it, this past, was it WrestleMania, did you see that moment, Ike Phillips just had his moment. You know? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's that's Bruce, pretty surreal to think about. I just saw that. I'm like, wow. Uh, Bruce Braun Strowman, you know, got his face kicked in or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you get your, you know, you all, you, that's how it is, you know, in the business. You gotta, you get just noticed like that. You make a little run in, like Chris, you know, or whatever. Hey, every every opportunity counts, man. Yeah. You never, you never know what's going to this. this business is so crazy and unpredictable you never know what's gonna no, happen no and i and i and i just threw on smackdown and there was a christy christine starland you know like my god you know christine She's, i know making her name making making <laughs> making waves you know and just I'm think it, didn't just think she'll be next, at best of the best or right yeah sure no i don't know I don't, yeah she is she yes is, she is in best of the best yes correct. yes yeah well, yeah, let's talk a little bit best of the best, huh? Let's talk that. Might as well now. We're getting. I'm saying it right. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's big this year. It's pretty. It's it's star like one name that sticks out. Sammy Guevara is really yeah, good. You know, good for them, man. Good, good, good for all uh, mm-hmm. six. What is it? Sixteen competitors. Sixteen. You know? Good for every every single one of them, man. I'm, I'm, it's I, gonna be, I, I, yeah. It's a, it's a, gonna be like. I applaud, a I applaud them, man. You know. Yeah. yeah. Sammy Guevara, Anthony Green, Anthony Yangone. I mean, Anthony uh, just got. Statlander. Look at Anthony just got a contract. You know, Anthony. Darius Love, yeah, man. Good. Like, I yeah. Applaud, I, I applaud. Good for them, man. You know that it's, they're gonna they're gonna be uh, competing at the, in this prestigious tournament, best of the best, mm-hmm. 2018. That's you know that's fantastic, man. And I hope that whoever wins can make a big name for themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, um, but it's it's gonna be it's it's a moment that's gonna be kind of hard for me to uh, mm. uh, digest because you know I'm not in it. And, yeah, I know. It's like 
You know, I had set a goal for myself yes. to be in that thing. Yes. And, yeah. you know, it didn't, it didn't happen. No. It but, is, it but is you move, it is. You so move you know, on. You know what? You move on and you do... You yeah, show you up. Move on, but, yeah. and, and, you know, and I, the way it was looking, it looks like not only was I not going to be in the tournament, I don't think I was going to make it to the card. Mm -hmm. So, but luckily for me... Yeah. Uh, and you have uh, promoters mm -hmm. uh, like Chad Mines. Yes, big and shout Rob out to Fury. big shout and out these to are them. Promoters that are... have the balls to book the craziest motherfucker on earth. I know uh, Jay George, and they're they're booking me for uh, this this Saturday, April thirteenth. I won't be uh, at best of the best as far as no, I know. I'll, hopefully, you'll be at the Pro Wrestling After Dark event. Oh, but I will be at uh, at SWF Mega Slam mm -hmm. this Saturday. Mm -hmm. I take on the big deal, Craig Steele. My return to SWF after a number of months. I yeah. come back, and uh, maybe I'll see at the pro, mean, maybe I'll see in May at the Pro Wrestling After Dark. Hmm. You never know, man. You never yeah, know. there's <laughs> lots of names. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many names in that card. Like, my God. Were you at the first one? No, I was never. No, I was one. In just the recent one they had, the one in. Um, I see. That's the one I took. The first one was where yeah. I was. Uh, I teamed up with uh, Valdinas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you you don't you don't know what you'll you'll get at a yeah. at a pro wrestling after dark, but it's it's you you are guaranteed. Yes. Fun time. Uh, and, yeah, and I'm a sponsor. It's gonna be great this year. I can't wait. It's gonna be fun again. You know. Oh yeah. I can't wait to be a you know be in Atlantic City and just have a good time. <laughs> Go see wrestling, talk to friends, and you know get a lot of interviews. You know that's, that's the yeah, that's the key. You know that's the key. Last one that I did was so dead. Like the Wi-Fi in the building was crap, so I'm all set up now. You know I got all the Wi-Fi high spot and this and that. You know yeah. So I should be okay. If not, then I go. I just sit back and watch the show like a normal person, right? Hey, that's all you. That's, sometimes that's all you can do. Right? You can. You know, technical difficulties always happen. <laughs> I had my friend trying it from his home. He was he lives in Florida, and we run a podcast, you know, live, Facebook Live. We are trying to do a stream, and, you know, every time I tried it, <laughs> you know, froze up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they got you. They got me. They got me, but I got through it, you know. Do my... you know, that's the thing. And yeah. That's the thing. That's what, that's what it's all about at the end of the day is, like, you had that setback and you got through it. And yeah, it's like I'm on Twitter, you know, I'm learning now. I'm going, learning about that OBS streaming stuff. That stuff's crazy, you know. It's the next, but that's the next level, man. That's the next it, level. It really you is. You have to do. It is, and I'm learning it really quickly by myself, you know. Slow yeah. and steady. Slow and steady, you know. Because I want to get on YouTube, you know, I already have it set up to YouTube, so I'm, I'm, I might not even do a Facebook Live, I might just shoot it right to, I don't know, Chad might let me, who knows, I just want to get some interviews, you know, and just plug it, you know, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, man, just keep it, you, you, you keep that energy going, you, it. you got it, you know what, if you're a fan of the business, that's, oh, that, that's pretty, like, I'm sure you're like, wow, this guy has a deathmatch wrestling, and he's... He's got all indie wrestling. He talks wrestling. That's what you want, you know. You don't get that genre of like a re you know other podcasters on this. All you want is WWE, WWE, you know, and all the other stupid Mark ones podcasts that are on the planet, you know. Yeah. You just, I mean, I could cover like you don't you you know like like everything, man. It's great. It's what you want, you know. What you want, people hey. don't people don't realize like you, you know. I was like, you know what? Uh, all right, I'm a fan of wrestling. I could do a podcast. I could do this. It's easy, you know. It's fun. It took and me you long. did it, and now here you are, man. Uh, I was sitting behind That's a Mike Russell podcast. Sitting. Um, yeah, dude. What's the what's the most violent match you've ever seen? <sighs> violent? I've seen <laughs> violent. I've been to v Virginia. I've seen a lot of blood uh, for BOW. There's another promotion that's really made a name. They were just, uh, you know, Black Craft Wrestling was a part of, the, you know, their big shout out to Black Craft Wrestling, you know. It's uh, like one of those companies that took a lot of the guys under their wing after, you know. That is true. But, no, I've seen, I've seen, like, Toby Klein to Matt Tremont, to Nick Gage versus John Wayne Murdoch for like 40 seconds, you know, going one on one, you know, it's just crazy, just crazy, anything, you know, bloody, I've seen it all, you know, I've seen the spill of blood lots, you know. What was the most uh, holy shit spot that you remember? 
the holy shit spot probably had to have been um, the trampoline. <laughs> the trampoline at Cade uh, Tournament. Like this past year? Yes, yes. Really? That was the most violent spot? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm not going to... No. That, that, I would have to say that because that was really like a holy shit. You're watching these guys jump off a trampoline and, you know, and it was like, wow, wow, you know, not like the first one they did, you know, they tried it a couple times and, you know, but yeah, that was the moment. But I'm so used to the dust and the, you know, I'm so used to the, fu by now, you know, I'm so used to it, the fumes and glass and wake up in the morning, I get the old crystals in my eye, you know. Hell yeah. Dude, I still have shoes from like a year ago that still have thumbtacks in them. From you know, every time I go, every time I go to a, a, a show, I get like two tacks in my shoe. Every time. <laughs> every... No, that's what you want. That's it. And and then funny time, funny. I love this. I like telling this stupid story. But I went to a going to get a cup of coffee at Starbucks uh, at, before CZW, right? Before C or after CZW, and uh, I I had this this guy looked at me. Right, I I dropped. I must have reached in my pocket, and a thumbtack fell out. <laughs> I I told him you you should come and check this out. It's wrestling, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're missing something good. <laughs> You're missing, yeah, dude, they didn't, that's you, the thing. Sometimes they don't know what they're missing. No, no. <clears throat> um, boy, we're like moving along quickly on these. This is awesome. It is. Uh, so who are your who are your influences growing up? Also, um, man, so many people. Uh, the yeah. Rock, Batista. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, I wouldn't say Batista was an influence <laughs> as much as right as much as he was someone I grew to, to yeah. celebrate right. as a professional wrestler in the later years. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't tell you how awesome it was to be able to be a part of his last. Not a part. I wasn't a part of it. What am I saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> To be at his last match yes. for uh, yeah. at WrestleMania. Um, uh, I was sitting on, I, I was sitting on my couch when that happened, okay? <laughs> influences guys for guys like uh, yeah. Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, mm -hmm. uh, Ric Flair, Steve Austin, yes. Bruiser Brody, Roddy Piper. Mm -hmm. so oh, oh, actually, what time is it? Oh, it's on right now. It should be on right about now. There's a documentary on Vice TV about Bruiser Brody. It's been out. It's been out on YouTube. They put it out on YouTube for everyone to watch. So I know. I gotta watch that. I gotta check that out. Did you check? I saw. Did you see the high spots one? The no, no. I the didn't. high spots one. The high spots did one, and I think they put it out for free too. Um, it was very good. Yeah. And I, I can imagine the last one will be just as good. Actually, you know, you know so what? Like, also, I know I, the story now, but like. Yeah. It'll be. It's always good to see. And I, I, and I was privileged as a young kid. I got to see him wrestle inside the steel cage, in New Jersey. Man, that's in so my back. Cool. Yes, he was in the cage with the. Uh, uh, God, who the hell was it? Chief J. Strongbow at the time. Abdul the Butcher. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of guys. Where it was called NWF Wrestling. It's on YouTube. How 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 old were you? I was probably about nine or ten years old. Just you know. Just That's crazy. Yeah, just seeing this guy and, <laughs> and idolizing him, you know. Yeah, he was he was a man. He was uh, the a, nope. A lot of lot of lot of love for Bruce Brody. I mean, yeah. he's hard to like. Mm -hmm. He's hard in a way to kind of uh, mm -hmm. emulate or like be. Like, it's like he's not someone you study their matches because just you can't do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just another all that other animal like the closest people that remind me of Bruiser Brody today mm -hmm. would be L. A. Park and Brock Lesnar are like two of the closest mm -hmm. to that. Absolutely, you know? yeah, you're right. That's a good comparison. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could see that. Then people, oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, uh, L. A. Park's a tremendous mm -hmm. uh, brawler and stuff, but also business wise, like mm -hmm. he does whatever the hell he wants to do. He's not gonna like he's very much his own person. And I really like admire people that are able to stick to their guns like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you were uh, say, what were we saying about the document on a high spots? So it was really good. Yeah, 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 very good. I, I can imagine the vice one will be just as good too, though. So. Yeah, yeah. Jake the Snake was uh, talking about her. I, I think I just saw something pop up like Facebook Live. He was on it talking about it. I just saw. Yeah, that's this episode is tonight. I actually just, I just actually just a couple weeks back went over to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to the, actually, Jake was in town for his uh, comedy tour. That was pretty cool. 
Yeah, did you get to go to the show? I was. I got free tickets from the 95.9 The Rat, you know? Nice. From The Rat. So it was pretty cool to see what he had to say, and, you know, I talked about it. I, pulled, I f was the first one to ask about a snake, and so he went on about the snake, how it was in his hotel all the time, and just hung around, you know? It was just crazy. The stories he could tell you, you know, with Hacksaw, his best friend, and, like, everybody else in the business, you know? How he had his ups, how he had his downs, you know? Just like anybody else. Yeah, I know, and Diamond, yeah. as Diamond Dallas Page saved his life, and we know that, and that's a pl he's lucky that he got aboard with that yoga, you know, DDP, you know, yoga when he did, you know, and counseling and all that stuff, so, you know, along with Scott Hall, we remember when he, yeah, like the demons and shit, it's crazy, it's crazy for these guys, you know, we see it every day, but, you know, they didn't get by, you know, move to a new level, you know. But I think that is it. That's a wrap, I think. That's Jay it, George. Man. Hey, man, thank you so much for having me on. Well, hey, me. hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, what can we expect from Jay, Jay George in 2019? I'm going to tell you the same thing uh, Alistair Black told me all those years ago. Think globally because that's what I'm planning on doing is expanding more on a global level. And I hope in the next uh, couple of weeks... I will be announcing something very major as regards to the future of my career. So you want to make sure you want to stay tuned to that. And the only way to do that is if you follow me on Instagram at jgeorge 49 That's J-G-E-O-R-G-E-489. Same thing for Twitter, jgeorge 489 I'm on jgeorge Estrella, E-S-T-R-E-L-L-A, -L -L on Facebook. And um, you can also search that for my YouTube videos uh, where I have matches and promos uploaded on there. And, you know, thank you again so much for having me on this podcast. Absolutely, George. Jay George, you can come back anytime you want. And we're just, hey, we're. Laid it all out. So hey, you, wanna... you, got, you got any upcoming events? Do we need to plug any upcoming events you're going to be taking place? Yeah. Uh, my next After... two major matches will be April 13th, this Saturday, Mega Slam. I take on the big deal, Craig Steele. And then April. 19th at CZW Dojo Wars Super Show. You don't want to miss this one. This is monumental. It's going to be me teaming up with the legendary C.W. Anderson, and we will be taking on the tag team of DJ Hyde, the Lariat God himself, the boss of CZW, and uh, the head of Human Resources, uh, none other than William H. Turner, and uh, it's his first ever match. Hmm. So this is going to be... The match to see. It's definitely going to be a match. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be one to see, but... Yeah. Only way to find out is if you're there live April 19th. Yeah. And, yeah, April 13th, Mega Slime, big show of the year for us. Yeah. yeah. And, and you said stay tuned, fans, because something special is going to happen pretty soon for, for J. George. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jay George, I want to say thank you so much for being on, man. And like I said, to come back anytime you want. You know, you're more than welcome to come on my podcast. Shoot the shit, you know? Hey, no problem. Thank you. Yep. Have a good night. Fans, I want to say thank you so much to my guest tonight, Jay George, indie pro wrestler, for coming on. You know, he's. He's come a long way in his career. He's t making his name known. And you know what? Check him out everywhere. He's everywhere in wrestling. Say hello to him. Stop by and, uh, you know, or check him out at an event and say hello to him. And, you know, get an 8x10. Get your merchandise as well. And, and just watch him wrestle. He's one to see, like he said, this Saturday, SWF Mega Slam. He's taking on the big big Chris Steele and uh, that's going to happen and then the 19th the CZW Dojo event as well good night everybody thank you for listening and tune in to the Death of Matt Russell podcast for, for another episode
Hey, wrestling fans, I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on a, an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code DeathMatchRussellPodcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Collar and Elbow where wrestling passion meets street fashion. You, you can find more Deathmatch Russell podcasts on the following social media, deathmatchrussell.com, follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash DJDaveNJ32. Find me on Podcast City Network at podcastcity.net, facebook.com slash podcastcitynetwork. Hit the like button and share, and on Twitter at podcastcitynet. You can hear Deathmatch Russell podcasts on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.